Now, this story has led to a lot of conversations about squatters' rights, specifically rental properties. According to Property Club in Michigan, a squatter can claim possession of a property after 15 straight years of living in that space. They retain all the same rights as a property owner who purchased it from the original owner. Now, we have a lot to dive into tonight. This is absolutely absurd, so we want to get straight to that conversation. Joining us to do that is Sally French, a travel writer for Nerd Wallet. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, so this is just absolutely ridiculous to me. We want to talk about best practices when it comes to Airbnb and renting out your property. What do people need to know? Yeah, well, it can be really challenging to be a host of an Airbnb property. You know, when Airbnb first came to being, it was seen as this way that you could rent out a spare room in your home. Uh, even the CEO of Airbnb used it because uh, rooms in the city were sold out. And so he figured he would give up his room to a tourist coming into town. But what has happened is that Airbnb has evolved into something so much bigger than that. And you have situations like this where uh, the the renter might not even be there when the owner of the home is there uh, and that has really changed the spirit of airbnb and made it difficult for renters made it difficult for owners and it's brought about situations like this wow that is just scary to even imagine that you find yourself in that situation so is there a checklist that people should be looking at when they decide to do this or are there ways to make sure that you are fully protected yeah, well, it can be challenging as a host to know whether that renter is someone that you actually want to rent to, and that can be difficult. What's also equally difficult, though, is being a renter and ensuring that you're renting a property at a place that is actually as it's described. Now, Airbnb has taken a lot of measures recently to make sure that its properties are safe for people who are renting out, because on the flip side, you don't want to rent out a unit that isn't as what was described. So actually coming soon is a verified feature mode where Airbnb will actually come to units and verify that they are what they are. So that way when you're a renter and you're looking at all these vacation properties that you might potentially book, you can ensure that you're getting one that is verified. Now, whether there's something as a verified traveler, uh, that does not exist. Okay. So if someone gets in and is like, you know, I think I like this. I'm going to make this my home. Then you have that issue, you run into the initial response of, okay, this is going to be a problem. What are the first steps? Do you call the police? Do you get, you know, angry? What do you do? Yeah, well, in the situation of the squatter, it's difficult to know how long that person's really going to be there. Uh, on the flip side, if you get to a rental and you're a regular traveler and the rental is not as described, there are protections that you can take. Uh, something that we see commonly and, you know, not all the time, but more common than what you would like is when the host actually ghosts you. So this is when you're a traveler and you've arranged to meet up with the host at, let's say, 2 p.m on a Friday to pick up the keys and the host doesn't show up, uh, you've been ghosted. And Airbnb has put in more measures in place to ensure that doesn't happen to you, but it is still something that can happen. So it's important that, um, you know, you have, if it's an emergency situation, you have local police phone numbers on hand, but you also have the contact information for the rental company, whether that's Airbnb or Verbo. Uh, so that way they can get you set up in a new place as soon as possible. Possible. The phenomenon of ghosting where the owner doesn't show up as promised is something that we're seeing more and more frequently, especially when it comes to this rise of peer to peer rental services. And we're seeing this in things like cars or motorhomes where you agree to pick up a motorhome and the owner never shows up with that owner with that motorhome. And so as a renter, it's important that you have a backup plan, even if that company says, hey, we'll put you in a new vacation rental or we'll get you a new motorhome, that could still take hours of your precious vacation time. So always have a plan where you can go if the initial rental doesn't work out. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Let's move on to something else. If you have those issues where you're getting charged for damage that you did not create or cause, how do you handle that? 
That is a great question. And it's really important that you document things. So in other peer-to-peer -peer rental services, things like Turo or GetAround, which are peer-to-peer -peer car sharing services, the apps actually recommend that you take photos. So before you check out that GetAround car, you'll take photos of the exterior and the interior of the car. So that way you have a real claim. If someone says there was a dent in it, well, you can say that dent was there to begin with. And it's great practice, especially when you're going to a vacation home as well to document any potential damages so that way the owner won't try to charge you for them. Yeah, sounds kind of similar to when you rent a car. You know, some of them will have you walk around the car and check for anything. I know a lot of people, Sally, when they're on those vacations, they're focused on just getting that trip started, but this could save you in the long run. Absolutely. That is a best practice to not just jet off in the car or immediately unload all of your stuff in the vacation rental, but make sure that it is as described so that way you're not challenged with anything down the road. All right. Good to keep in mind as we approach the busy holiday travel season. Sally French, a travel writer with Nerd Wallet. Thank you for your time. Thank you.